Welcome to Skipton, the gateway to the Yorkshire Dales, and one of the most pleasant towns in all of Yorkshire. Situated in the foothills of the Wild Dales, this enchanting town has a rich history that takes in everything from one of England's best preserved medieval castles to countless grand old mills and a calming canal side atmosphere. We'll explore all of that and more as we tour the centre of Skipton, but we begin our walk here at the heart of town on Skipton's rather wide High Street. The High Street is one of the oldest points in the whole town, for centuries the home of markets, and today lined by grand buildings of a range of different eras. Here we can see perhaps the grandest building on the High Street, Skipton Town Hall, built in 1862. Originally built as a public function room, the building was expanded and converted into the Town Hall in 1895, replacing an older, smaller one on nearby Sheep Street. Today, while retaining its function as a public events venue, the Town Hall is also the home of the Craven Museum and Gallery, which exhibits the story of the local region of Craven. And Craven is a name that you'll hear a lot when walking around Skipton, as the town serves as the modern headquarters for this historic district that stretches deep into the Yorkshire Dales. But to better understand how the town of Skipton plays a role in the region, we need to take a look at exactly where it's located on a map. As the self-styled gateway to the Yorkshire Dales, Skipton sits just to the south of the sparse and wild region. Meanwhile, located about 20-25 miles northwest of the cities of Bradford and Leeds. Skipton's location therefore puts it just outside the densely populated built-up area of West Yorkshire, with a number of unique features compared with the industrial towns that surround it. Here just to the north of the High Street for example, is one of the town's most famous landmarks, Skipton Castle. This is the gateway to the castle, which was built well over 900 years ago, around the year 1090 AD. At the time, Skipton Castle was little more than a simple fort, which regularly found itself devastated by Scottish raiders attacking vast swathes of Northern England. However, it was soon replaced with an enormous and strong stone castle that used the hilly landscape surrounding Skipton to its advantage. From the 14th century, when this gateway was built, the immense castle was the home of the wealthy Clifford family, whose coat of arms and motto, Désormais, meaning henceforth in Norman French, can be seen on the upper part of the gatehouse. Later on in history, in the English Civil War of the 17th century, this castle was notably the final stronghold of the Royalists in Northern England, which held out for three years against sieges by the Parliamentarians before finally losing out in 1645. While the castle was then deliberately damaged on the orders of Oliver Cromwell, this mighty fortress of Skipton remains one of the best preserved medieval castles in all of England, and is still open to visit, where you can explore the many more stories that took place inside its walls. We'll talk more about the legacy of Skipton Castle in a little while, but next door to the Grand Fortress stands the rather more humble parish church of Skipton, Holy Trinity. Also situated at the top of the High Street, this church is another of Skipton's oldest buildings. Originally, the large churchyard that it now occupies was home to a small wooden chapel from the 12th century, but the building we see today replaced it around the year 1300 before being extended in stages over the following centuries. During the Civil War, when the Parliamentarians were laying siege to the Royalist-held Skipton, this church suffered considerable damage, particularly on its tower, although it was swiftly restored with support from the Clifford family, who lived in the castle next door. Nowadays, Holy Trinity Church is a wonderful landmark at the heart of Skipton, overlooking the High Street from what is likely one of the points in town which has been settled for the longest time. Looking from the churchyard onto the high street, in the foreground we can see Skipton's towering war memorial, placed in the centre of the road in 1922, paying tribute to locals who lost their lives fighting in the two world wars. It's an elegant monument that stands opposite the equally elegant parish church, 
inside which you'll also find a range of gorgeous stained glass windows, as well as the magnificent tomb of George Clifford, who was laid to rest inside the church all the way back in 1605. But as we now make our way out of the churchyard, it's time to take a stroll along the high street, where we'll uncover the story of how the town of Skipton came into being, before we then make our way towards the canal side, a key area in the development of this town in the industrial era. At the top of the high street, we've seen evidence of how Skipton existed back in the medieval era, but just here a few steps away from the castle and parish church stands one of the oldest pubs in town, the Black Horse. The current pub was built back in 1676, but it has a much longer history than that, said to have been used to house the horses of the future King Richard III in the 15th century, when he was Lord of the Honour of Skipton, and it was even the place of an urban legend from the time of the English Civil War. The story goes that after the Royalists finally surrendered to the Parliamentarians, crucially giving up their last stronghold in Northern England, a troop of roundhead soldiers went to have a drink inside the pub, but were served poisoned ale by the Royalist sympathising locals of Skipton. But unless you're actually trying to invade the town of Skipton, there's no need to worry about poisoning the drinks in the town today. Moving on from that tale, we now find ourselves looking up at the statue of Sir Matthew Wilson, a former local MP from 1874 to 1885. Wilson also served as a magistrate in Skipton from the age of 22 until his death at the grand old age of 88, the longest serving tenure in the town's history. His statue stands before Skipton Library, which was opened back in 1910 and which was formerly the home of the Craven Museum, located in the library's basement, before the museum moved over the road to the town hall in 1973. Now apart from the black horse that we just passed, most of the buildings that we can see at this point of the high street are fairly recent in the context of Skipton's long history. Most were built in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, but the high street looked very different back in the medieval era. As we've mentioned, the high street is the historic home of markets in Skipton, which have been held here ever since the year 1204. Skipton's market grew over the years, and was renowned in particular as a place where animals were traded, including cows and other livestock, but most of all, sheep. Sheep and other wool products have been bought and sold in Skipton for as long as the town has been around, and the area became so well known for this that it actually gained the name Skipton, which simply means sheep town. The animal markets on the high street were at the centre of life in Skipton for centuries, but as the town began to develop in the industrial era, there emerged a collection of small yards off the high street. As well as serving as storage areas for businesses located on the high street, these narrow yards were typically home to rows of tiny cottages that were built wherever there was space. This came about as a result of the growth of industry in Skipton in the 18th century, which increased the size of the local population to multiple times what the town was prepared for. The 18th and 19th centuries, therefore, were a period of rapid economic development in Skipton, but also, like much of the country, harsh living conditions for people working in the town. In fact, in the mid-19th century, when the town's population had grown to around 8,000, life expectancy in Skipton was as low as 35 years old, owing to poor sanitation caused by the town's overwhelmed and undeveloped infrastructure. We'll talk more about that in a little while, but here as we look along the high street, you'll notice the grand buildings that line the street on both sides, but there's also a smaller street that runs parallel to it, and which was once just as busy as the bustling high street. This is Sheep Street, named for obvious reasons, and which is today a delightfully cobbled parade of shops, cafes and restaurants. On our left here, however, the building with the large staircase was the former Skipton Town Hall, thought to have been built in the early 17th century. As we mentioned, the Town Hall then migrated further up High Street to the modern building where we started our walk, but the old Town Hall here on Sheep Street has also been used for a number of purposes, including a toll booth, a prison, a courthouse, a tea room, 
and today a shop. All of this points towards the fact that Sheep Street once occupied a role equal to, or perhaps even more important than the High Street in the life of Skipton locals. But now, it's time to make our way out of this historic central part of town, and take a walk towards the idyllic canal side area that's so beloved in the town today. To get there, we need to take a walk through Victoria Square, a wonderful little shopping precinct that makes use of the layout of the old yards that spurt off Skipton High Street. While the High Street is home to a good deal of the main shops in Skipton, the town is home to an irresistible array of independent and alternative retailers too, many located in Victoria Square here, which offers a range of offbeat products amid a characterful part of the town centre. As the main population centre in the Craven District, the opportunities for shopping in Skipton are as plentiful as the many historic landmarks we've already seen. The outskirts of the town centre are home to a number of large supermarkets that people living in nearby countryside villages drive to, while shopping areas in the heart of town, like those to be found here in Victoria Square, also draw in shoppers from around the region. But shopping is just one part of what makes modern day Skipton such a great place to live. Home to around 15,000 people today, this nicely sized market town has regularly been voted as one of the best places to live in all of England. Skipton's appeal extends beyond the many landmarks and attractions of the town centre. It's a very easy town to reach by road and rail from big cities like Leeds and Bradford, while its location on the edge of the Yorkshire Dales means that there's an abundance of countryside to explore on the doorstep. Of course, there's an ever-growing array of pubs and restaurants to sample, whether you're just visiting or living in Skipton, all of which has made for a delightful town centre that's home to a really lovely, pleasant atmosphere. I always adore a walk around Skipton, whether on a busy warm summer's day or a chilly but tranquil evening like today. But as we've spoken about, it's not just the streets of Skipton that give it such character, but also its canals. Walking out onto Coach Street, we now find ourselves in a part of town that's surrounded by waterways, a crucial arm in the town's history that developed around the 18th century. We'll take a walk from here to get a view over the canals from a road bridge, before we then make our way along the gorgeous local Springs Branch Canal that leads up towards the church and Skipton Castle, where we'll finish our tour later on. Now after centuries of having been a focal point in the region on account of its sheep and wool markets, the emergence of the Industrial Revolution in Britain changed Skipton dramatically. As trade and particularly the manufacture of textiles grew in inland towns across Yorkshire, it was decided that a great new canal was needed to transport these goods to one of England's busiest ports, Liverpool, over on the west coast. So in 1770, it was decided that an enormous 127 mile canal would be built stretching all the way from the rapidly rising city of Leeds to Liverpool, passing through the fast growing mill towns of Yorkshire and Lancashire. Skipton was one of these towns, and beneath us we can see the canal that came to dominate its industry, the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, which is the second longest in all of Britain. This point of the Leeds and Liverpool Canal is a junction with the local Springs Branch Canal, which we'll be walking alongside in a few minutes. But as the formidable Leeds and Liverpool flows through Skipton, it passes by rows and rows of historic mills and factories that were part of the explosion of industry in Skipton. While the full length of the 127 mile canal eventually opened in 1816, the first section was completed all the way back in 1773, oh, yeah. and it connected Skipton with the town of Bingley, about 12 miles to the southeast. Within 12 years of the completion of that section of canal, the first industrial mill in Skipton was built, used to spin cotton. It was followed afterwards by a number of increasingly large mills throughout the 19th century, most of which were used as weaving mills manufacturing textiles. Each of Skipton's largest mills housed hundreds of weaving looms and employed hundreds upon hundreds of people, 
which contributed to the boom in the local population throughout the 19th century. But it wasn't just textiles and wool products that were exported out of Skipton onto the barges that trundled along the canal towards Leeds and Liverpool. The town was also a major exporter of grain, traditional wool products and stone from a quarry located to the rear of Skipton Castle, which we'll talk more about shortly. Skipton's capacity to export goods increased further with the opening of the town's railway station in 1847, situated not far from the major Bellevue Mills complex that employed a large proportion of people in the town at the time. However, while Skipton spent much of the 19th century growing and growing as a thriving mill town, this rise didn't last forever. The early 20th century saw a decline in the industry across much of Yorkshire, but Skipton managed to stave off the devastating drop-off in its economy, suffered by a number of other former mill towns in the region. While many of its former mills were converted into rather attractive housing estates, from the mid-20th century, Skipton established itself firmly as a popular tourist destination. The town counted on the appeal of the many historic landmarks that we've already seen, as well as as a place for people to stay before heading up into the wild Yorkshire Dales. But if there's one thing Skipton's tourist industry really uses to its advantage, it's the town's delightful network of canals. Here, we find ourselves on the towpath beside the Springs Branch Canal, a short local branch of the Leeds and Liverpool Canal that heads up towards the rear of Skipton Castle and the place where stone mined from local quarries was loaded onto boats for export. As you can see, the heavy industry that gave birth to this canal in 1773 is now very much a thing of the past, but the Springs Branch Canal remains one of the most popular spots in Skipton on account of the many picturesque canal boats that are moored along it. These red and green canal boats can be seen all over Skipton and are available for hire by anybody visiting the town, whether for a day or even longer. Hiring a canal boat is a wonderful way to experience Skipton from a different angle, and you can follow the path of the barges that brought prosperity to this town by navigating up Springs Branch Canal, or even take a longer trip out of the town centre towards beautiful canal side towns like Silsden, just to the southeast. But even if you don't take a trip out onto the water of Skipton's canals when visiting, a walk along the towpath like we're doing here is always a delight from enjoying the unique names people give their own canal boats to admiring the scenery all around. Looking over to the left, you'll notice that this towpath lies on a bit of an island between the canal and a small stream that flows alongside it. This stream is known as Ella Beck, and it has flowed through this part of town for centuries, historically used to power the oldest mill in Skipton, which we'll be visiting in a moment or two. But when the canal was built alongside it, this new waterway wasn't just used for transporting goods as part of Skipton's industry. As we mentioned earlier, the rapid growth in population in Skipton in the 19th century saw the town's infrastructure become rather overwhelmed, with many people living in cramped and squalid conditions around the canals and mills. Springs Branch Canal here fell victim to the harsh living standards of the time, with many people living in the yards on the other side of the canal here effectively using it as a sewer, dumping their waste from the toilet, which was usually shared between as many as 10 houses, into the water. Fortunately, this once putrid part of Skipton has been beautifully cleaned up in the decade since. While this small wooden bridge was helpfully constructed in 1999 to make an easy footway between the Springs Branch towpath and the road over the canal. We'll make our way up onto the road to return to the parish church at the end of our walk. But let's continue walking along Springs Branch Canal towards one of Skipton's most historic corners. Now this point of the canal is traditionally known as the Back of the Beck, in reference to Ella Beck, which is connected to the canal by a small weir, over which overflowing water from the canal or the small mill race, which was built to carry water to the nearby Spindle Mill, empties into the beck. This now quiet and calming area of Skipton was once a highly complex artery in the town's industry, with the canal typically used by barges carrying stone, the beck carrying the natural water flow, and the mill race directing water towards the spindle mill. What's more, 
When the canal was used as an effective open sewer around the mid-19th century, it wasn't just local residents whose waste was being dumped into the water. From around 1850, Skipton's town centre became dominated by a cattle market, held on the high street every two weeks. When the market was on, waste from bulls and cows would pile up in the heart of Skipton, to be swept away once a week. And the receptacle for that dung was Millbridge here, from which cattle waste was swiftly chucked down into the canal, creating what would have almost certainly been an unbearable stench in the area. Now while most of the modern mills that came to dominate Skipton's industry were located alongside the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, Millbridge here takes its name from a far older mill, which is believed to be one of the oldest in all of Yorkshire. The Springs Branch Canal widens out a little as it readies to sweep around Skipton Castle, which we can see across the water here. This point of the town is pretty much where central Skipton comes to an end, with the thick wooded area behind the castle known as Skipton Castle Woods, a great place to explore, and an area that once provided a good defence for the fortress. In the medieval era, around the time when the castle came into the ownership of the wealthy Clifford family, it's thought that this High Corn Mill was built. Established around 1310, this more than 700 year old mill was powered by the flow of Ella Beck, producing corn for the people living in Skipton and most importantly, its castle. Now the mill as we see it today, which is now used by a variety of shops and offices, is only about half the size as it was at its peak. The High Corn Mill once had a monopoly on the production of corn in Skipton, a right which lasted all the way up until the 19th century. As you can imagine, the arrival of the Leeds and Liverpool Canal and the birth of much larger mills meant that this relatively small facility set back from the main canal was rather superseded. But the High Corn Mill remained in operation grinding corn for the people of Skipton for a good while afterwards. It wasn't until the 1950s that the historic mill was opened up, initially converted into an industrial museum, before eventually finding its way to becoming the characterful corner of Skipton that it is today. We're now up onto Mill Bridge, once upon a time home to that big pile of cow dung, but which today connects the western side of Skipton with the very heart of town. This area has been populated as long as the castle and the church have been around, and as we continue along the street back towards the heart of Skipton, we can see the grand tower of Holy Trinity Church bathed in evening sunlight. The church tower, which was damaged not only by parliamentarian shelling in the Civil War, but also numerous lightning strikes over the centuries, looms large over the Castle Inn, a historic landmark in its own right. Built in the early 19th century, this historic coaching inn once served weary travellers entering Skipton while on their way across the region, but it was nearly destroyed in 1853 by one of those lightning strikes, as falling masonry from the church tower beside it almost obliterated the old inn. And so it stands as a testament to the endurance of the people of Skipton in the past that so many of its historic buildings remain standing today. Whether damaged by war, lightning, flooding, or simply overwhelmed by the boom in population during the industrial era, this town has been through rather a lot over the course of its illustrious thousand years of history, but it now finds itself arguably in one of the best positions it's ever been, as a much-loved tourist destination and famously wonderful place to live. Now back in the parish churchyard, we've come to the end of our walk around Skipton for today. An absolutely delightful town to explore all year round, there's no wonder Skipton has been so successful in recent decades, and I hope you've enjoyed exploring its captivating history on this tour. All that leaves me to say is thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you're now looking forward to visiting Skipton for yourself in future too.